Welcome to Entrepreneurs International Network, where entrepreneurs learn, network, and grow. I'm Roger Killen, the organizer. Today, Felicia Searcy is training us on how to achieve our goals and dreams by becoming unstuck and unstoppable. Felicia, I have a few questions that will help us get to know you. The first is, what's the best decision you've ever made? So um, it's actually a twofold. You know, if you look at personal um, and then you look at business, I think for both of them, the best decision that I ever made was that I bailed myself to people that were smarter than I was, that I have teachers, I have mentors, I have guides, that um, um, I, I, I understand and I'm grateful for this, that my knowledge alone is only gonna take me so far. Um, but that when I tap into people that have um, a proven method gone before me and care deeply, then I'm able to bring an even better version of myself to my people, the people, my people, people in my personal life um, and um, people in my vocation as well. So getting help, it's the best decision I've ever made, just getting help. Right. Question number two. These get progressively more difficult. <laughs> What's the biggest challenge you've ever had to overcome? So the biggest challenge, you know, and I was thinking about this, um, um, you know, at broad stroke, um, I, like many people, came from uh, a dark background and so had to overcome that. But when I um, when I got into adulthood and especially building my business, um, my business started right at the same time that my husband became critically ill. And so the biggest challenge was keeping my dream in the forefront of my mind as I was staying present for what was going on with my husband. To trust that even as I, as I made myself and my dream mattered, it was the action, the way to serve my husband rather than take away from him. Oh, that's a very moving answer. Thanks for sharing that. And the third question, probably a little lighter, is what's your favorite delicious pleasure? What's your favorite delicious pleasure? All right, so are we... <laughs> How clean does this have to be, Roger? <laughs> <laughs> we're all we're all adults here. So. <laughs> just teasing. So of course, you know, my husband and I have been together for almost thirty five years. So I love just curling up with him and, you know, getting intimate and uh, um, just you know being with Michael. Um, and if we're talking delicious pleasures, you know, from a taste bud thing, chocolate. Just you know, I don't do sugar, so I find. Uh, uh, chocolate that hasn't been made with refined sugar but you know sex and chocolate the two have to go together <laughs> that is very adult <laughs> <laughs> thanks for sharing that with us felicia patrice is blushing for me because she knows that this is a little bit out of character for me but how else can you answer that question participants we'll just move on here Partic <laughs> uh, if you have questions please type them into the chat and uh, every 10 minutes or so during Felicia's workshop, I'll interrupt Felicia and pose your questions to her. So type them into the chat and rest assured they'll get passed on to Felicia. Yeah, and I'm keeping an eye on the chat as well, because I know in the moment, right, that the people got those questions in the moment. So as I can, I'll work it in um, as we go. Participants, you're going to be sent a link to the recording of this talk in a few hours, but I still encourage you to take notes anyway, as the very act of taking notes is going to increase what you absorb by as much as around 30%. Felicia, are you ready to rock the stage? I'm ready. Let's do it. And take it away. I'm going to put you on, I'm going to exit full screen. I'm going to put you on spotlight. And, and I want to put everybody, I'm going to put it back on gallery so I can see your amazing faces. And so I'm not going to start out with the PowerPoint right away because I want to look at you. And I realized that, you know, some of you've got your names, but even if I'm, as I'm seeing your names, I'm, um, 
you know, wrapping my arms around your names. And so as each one of you came into this training today with a deep desire to serve with your business, right? That we're micropreneurs, entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, whatever it is, that something woke you up this morning, something woke you up at some point where you said, I have something profound to offer. And you made it a point to join Roger's organization in order to learn how to unlock that gift, unlock that value and bring it and put it in service to the people that are praying for you. So with that in mind, so first of all, Roger, an amazing thing that you've done in terms of creating this kind of organization. It's no lightweight thing to put an organization like this together and to keep it going and growing as much as you have. So as, as, you've, as you've come today, here's the thing I want you to start with. Right now, I want you to bring to mind that highest dream or aspiration that you have. I'm not talking about the goal that you think you can achieve, but I'm talking about the one that hangs out on the edges of your conscious awareness. That, you know, Serena, when you were talking about becoming a publisher, you know, that highest dream of being an impactful publisher, really allow yourself to see those images, the ones that absolutely take your breath away. Use this amazing faculty of our imagination to see the images, to play in that playground of your imagination. Do you have it? I'm looking at the ones of the people that I can see, and I want you to give me a thumbs up if you've got something really juicy that you're playing with in your imagination. Yes? Anybody? Thank you, Carolee. Here's the thing I want you to know. You're meant for that, and it's meant for you. And I wanna show you a system that will allow you to take what's in your imagination and unlock its power and bring it into the facts of your life where several times a day, there is a feeling that just rises up inside of you and you hear yourself saying, oh my gosh, I love my life. Raise your hand if you're in for that. Anybody in for that? Yay, I'm in the right place. All right, so you've heard this before. None of what I'm going to share with you tonight, I can't imagine that any of it is going to be new. Yet, if you look at the dream and you look at your current results, which by the way, are really good, I would imagine that there's some level of disconnect between what's happening in your life and what you say you want in your life. And that deep down, you know that you are meant for so much more, that you are, there's a much bigger um, more bolder, more powerful, impactful purpose that you are created to bring. And, and there's just, there's a level of frustration in the face of the disconnect. I get it. I've been there. I've been a student of what I'm calling universal law for decades. I found it at a really dark time in my life, applied it, and my life got out, off the chart good. I mean, it was great. Outside looking in, I didn't want for anything, yet there was still an ache. There was a longing for more. Now, when I work with people, I work in four areas. I work in the area of your health, your relationships, your vocation, and your freedom on your calendar and your checkbook. The reason I do this is because if you build the business at the expense of your health and your relationships, you do not have true wealth. Or if you build you know, your relationships, but feel like you have to trade your business, then you're leaving a part of you behind. And so we want to address all four of those areas as we go forward. Now, the two areas that were real sticking points for me were the area of my vocation and my income. I wanted to grow both because I wanted to make a bigger impact with both. Now, knowing what I know about Roger, just a little bit of interaction that we've had, and, and he used the word uh, integrity, he, Roger has a high value on service. You would not be in this community if you did not have a high value on impact, on service. So those two areas, vocation and income, were really sticking points for me. And I went out and I got help with marketing and I got help with how to have a heart-centered conversation, how to build leadership and culture. And all of those are important. I want you to hear me that every single one of those things are vital but they didn't give me the key to unlock the power that I knew that resided within me. And there was one initiative in particular that I just poured my heart and soul into thinking this was gonna be the thing to bust the energy wide open. Well, it didn't. 
it fell flat. It was okay. It was good. Like my life it was good. It was fine. But I was tired of good enough being good enough. That day is seared in the memory of my mind. I'll never forget it. I gave myself the gift of feeling my frustration deep enough and long enough to where I became willing to do something different. And I noticed a conversation that was going on inside my head. So notice if uh, you have this same conversation going on in your head. There was one voice that said, maybe you just need to hang it up. Maybe you're just not cut out for this. My God, if you haven't got this thing figured out by now, maybe it's time for you to move on. It's not a friendly voice. There was another voice that said, can you imagine you're working this hard now? If this thing really took off, you wouldn't have a life left. There was another voice that said, you know, your life is really actually good. Maybe this is the universe's way of saying, just be grateful for what you have. And then there was this insidious voice underneath that said, maybe you just don't deserve this much good. Now, I don't know what your voice is, but I know you got one. How do I know you have one? Because you have a dream and they go hand in hand. And I'm going to share with you why that's so. So whatever your voice is, I want you to bring it to mind right now. Because in that moment, in the depth of that frustration, there was, a, there was just this feeling that rose up inside of me. And I said, no, I've got this dream. There's got to be a way for me to fulfill it. And that's when I made a decision, the kind that you don't back up from. And as a result of that decision, I have discovered a, uh, a proven paint by numbers spiritual success system that allowed me to not only get unstuck, but just break through to break out results. And this is what I now get to share with you. So here's what my life looked like. So you can get a picture of what this looks like in real time. At the height of my frustration, I was serving maybe 50, 60 people annually. I now have the honor of serving the dreams of thousands of people around the world. My income, remember the two areas that were sticking points for me were my vocation and my income. My business has grown. I've grown my business to a level with my income that I am now able to give tens of thousands of dollars away to organizations that are deeply meaningful to me. My husband retired seven years early. We live in a place that we absolutely love. Every area of our life continues to get better. Those are my results. The question is, what are, the, what are your desired results? But here's the thing I want you to hear. It's almost like, all right, so what? Uh, big deal. Good for you, Felicia. What does this have to mean for me? The thing that it means for you is that it's a system. It's not anything that I did special, special dispensation, specially chosen, lucky, none of that. It's a system then anybody can learn and apply. And here's the second thing I really want you to hear as we go through this. The purpose of your dream is not to achieve things, to go check, 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 did that, did that, did that. The purpose of your dream, it's the universe's way of waking you up to even more of your brilliance and your magnificence. See, you are this unlimited being with unlimited capacity to create. And the only way the universe has of waking you up to that is by putting something in your heart, knocking at the door of your heart and saying, hey, 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 there's more for you and there's more to come from you. Your dream is not to get things. Building your business is not to get. Building your business is the way that you live your purpose. It is the way that life, the universe wakes you up to more of who you are created to be. It's not to get, it's to grow you. It's for who you become in the process. And this is what we're up to. All right, so now let me share my screen and bring this up. All right, so let me just share. Uh, oops, all right. Share a couple of quick pictures. Sorry about this, y'all. There we go. All right, so there are some of the amazing clients. Those are some of my VIP clients that I've been able to work with. Cynthia Kersey, the woman in red, is a um, has a foundation that I have contributed heavily to and raised money for over the years, and I'm deeply grateful to be involved in things like that. Um, and then the guy in the middle was Bob Proctor, who's actually from Canada, who I've had the honor of studying with uh, personally. As I shared in the question, that one of the best decisions I ever made was that I got help. 
that I, I surround myself with people that are smarter than I am and I give them access to my thinking and Bob was one of those. All right, so here's my intentions for you in this nanosecond of training. This 55 minutes is gonna go by fast. So here's what I hope to do in this amount of time. I wanna help you begin to design or think into something more expansive for yourself, a vision for a life that you would love. I wanna give you tools on how to build a rock solid belief in you and in the power that animated you so you can do this. And I'm gonna show you how to know what your next step is. So here's my promise to you. I'm going to pour into you during this time together. I'm going to give you everything I can. And then at the end, as Roger shared, I will share with you ways that we can go deeper with this and keep, keep this going. All right. So I talked about a formula. I actually have a five-step formula that in shorter trainings like this, I abbreviate to three steps. So here they are. And this is what we're going to dig deeper into. Number one, design your dream. Number two, build a bigger believing. Number three, activate your brilliance. You put those three things together and bam, you are living your dream. Arisha, your slide has not advanced. It's stuck on design your dream. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to stop share. This has never happened for me before. Uh, uh, Roger, so I'm, it's a new phenomenon. All right. So I'm going to keep talking while I'm doing this. So um, in order to know where you're going, you want to know where you currently are. So we're going to do what's called an aliveness inventory. Now, this is not a satisfaction inventory. Can you all see that? Is that advanced, Roger? Uh, your slide is in process of coming up. It tells me that you're, you've started screen sharing, but no slides have, have shown up yet. Okay. You know what? Then let me just... Um, let me just do it without the slideshow because I'm, again, I'm, I'm not sure exactly what's happening. Um, so I don't know how to fix it other than go back out and go back in, but I don't want to interrupt uh, the rhythm of this. So I'll uh, keep it animated enough for you all to um, uh, keep your focus and attention. And, and then plus, you know, we'll make it a little bit more interactive. So it's not just me and a talking head. So in order to know where you want to go, let's look at where you currently are. We're going to do an aliveness inventory. Now, this is not satisfaction. You are not created just to be satisfied. You're created to live life vibrantly. So let's look at where you currently are. We're going to take a pulse on where you currently are in those four areas, the area of your health, your relationships, your vocation, and your freedom on your calendar and your checkbook. I want you to pay attention to... Um, uh, two signals from your soul. And Miguel, I'm going to, as we go through them, I'll share with you uh, what the steps are. Before so you, you have, before you kick off, can uh, you repeat the three steps again, please? Yeah. So, um, and, and I, and as I shared, I'm going to um, go through them um, as during the presentation. So I'll bring them back around as I go through the presentation as well. But number one is design your dream. Number two is build a bigger believing. Number three is activate your brilliance. Thank you. Patrice, could you put those in the chat for me? All right. So, um, so right now, I want you to pay attention. So your life talks to you in two signals. One of them is longing. It's a pulling you forward. The other one is discontent. And one of the things that we sometimes do as human beings is that we avoid both of those, particularly discontent. That it's like when you notice your discontent, then you realize that you might actually have to do something. So, but that's, that's your life. This is life force energy speaking to you. Now, when we look at those four areas, I want you to think about where is your aliveness? And I want you to rank yourself one to five. One being, five being off the chart great. One being, it couldn't get any worse. When you think about your health, think about your vibrancy, your, um, um, your uh, energy, your aliveness. So Patrice, they're design your dream, build a bigger believing and activate your brilliance. Um, think about your vibrancy. Think about how you feel when you get up in the morning. Think about how you feel at three o'clock in the afternoon. What's the relationship with your body? How are you treating your body? When you think about your aliveness with your body and your health and well-being, write a number down. Where is your aliveness? One to five. Physically write something down right now in order to send a signal to the universe that you're engaged. All right, 
Second one, relationships. When you think about the, um, um, the nature of your relationships, the depth, the breadth, the beauty, um, the intimacy, the fun, where are you in terms of your aliveness with your relationships? Do you have good friends, a, uh, a beloved? Do you want a beloved? What's the depth of your relationship with your beloved? You're building businesses. What's the relationship with your clients, with your, um, um, your providers? One to five, where are you uh, in terms of your relationships? All right, and then your vocation. This is the primary reason why you're here. When you think about your vocation, do you love the way your vocation is going? Do you, um, do you uh, love what you're doing, how you're doing it, um, how much you're doing it, the scale, the scope of what you're doing? Or are there places that you would want to grow and possibly do some things differently? One to five, where are you in your aliveness with your vocation? And then finally, your freedom in your calendar and in your checkbook. Now your calendar, what's interesting about your calendar is that your calendar is the energetic blueprint of your life. That when you look at your calendar, it talks back to you. It tells you what the rhythm of your life is. Your calendar is a remarkable tool for transformation. Do you love the nature of your calendar? Do you tell your calendar what to do or does it tell you what to do? And then in your checkbook, do you play the money may I game? Do you go to your checkbook to ask permission to be able to do something? Or do you understand yourself, who you are as this amazing connected being that's connected to a source that knows all things with an unlimited supply of abundance. Where are you in your relationship with the substance that we call money? One to five. Now, I want you to circle the two lowest numbers and ask yourself this question, how long has the discontent been there? And what's it costing you to stay there? What's the cost if you're in the same conversation a year, two years, five years from now, people will evaluate the cost if you go for something and it doesn't work and it's too risky. And oftentimes that's the reason why people stay stuck, but rarely will people evaluate a thing called COI, cost of inaction or cost of staying where you are. All right, so raise your hand if you have more than one area that you want to improve. Yeah. Yes, of course you do. Living, growing beings that we're meant to grow and evolve. There's always going to be more. I love what Bob Proctor says, always be grateful, never be satisfied. All right. So Roger, I'm going to try this again. I'm going to see if I can um, uh, do a share screen share, see if it comes up again, you know, uh, see if I can get it to work this time. All right. Can you see it? Yes, we can see it. It's an introduction to the laws that govern our results. Perfect. All right. So we're going to ground this in a foundation. So here, I love using Andrew Carnegie because I, um, Andrew Carnegie was like the quintessential entrepreneur, right? That he spent the first half of his life um, amassing his wealth and the second half of his life giving it away. If you've ever been to a public library, you have Andrew Carnegie to thank for that. He funded them. Ben Franklin invented it. Andrew Carnegie funded them. So here's what he said. He said, any idea that is held in the mind, that is emphasized, that is either feared or revered will begin at once to clothe itself in the most convenient and appropriate form available. Any idea. Andrew Carnegie had an understanding of what uh, spiritual masters have taught throughout the ages and quantum physics is now proving that what we predominantly mentally rehearse in this uh, faculty of our imagination and charge with our feelings literally has a, uh, a way, uh, uh, an, an energetic um, frequency. It creates a wave and that wave is vibrating at a particular frequency. It then impresses literally gets transmitted out to an invisible field where there are waves of unformed energy hanging out what quantum physics calls superposition and in some fantastical way 
the thing that you are predominantly seeing in your imagination and charging with your emotions has an attractive factor to it. It has a magnetic factor that is attracting you things that line up with it and becomes the organizing principle for this energy, which then creates your results. It's the basic explanation of the law of attraction, which is actually a secondary law. The true law is the law of vibration. It's all energy. So here's another way of looking at it. You start with thoughts. Now, when I say thoughts, I'm talking images. You think in images. If I say front door, you see your front door. If I say car, you see your car. Those thoughts then evoke feelings in your nervous system. There is a physiological response in the form of feelings. It's your thoughts and your feelings, which then become what gets transmitted out to this field. Think of it this way. I had a conversation with a mediator uh, a couple of weeks ago, and um, she deals with uh, people going through divorce. And she talks about how people hate dealing with people going through divorce because it's so uncomfortable. Now, imagine walking into a room and these two people were fighting just before you walked in, but after you walked in, they're separated and they're not really communicating with each other, but you can cut the tension with a knife. It's bad vibe. What are you picking up on? You're picking up on their energy. You're picking up on their vibration. So thoughts and feelings literally send signals out into our world and your world then responds accordingly. The other thing that's super important about your thoughts and your feelings is that it determines the way you see yourself. You will never outperform your identity. You will never outperform your self-image. And as you're working with your thoughts and your feelings, you have to be able to increase the way that you see yourself. The reason why this is important is because it determines the kind of ideas that you're willing to entertain or you miss the opportunities you see or don't see. Those things then determine your actions and the way in which you take your actions, which then creates your results. So what causes your, uh, um, what causes your thoughts? It's where you place your attention. What are you paying attention to? Because in any given moment, something has captured your attention. You have a habit around what captures your attention. And your dream, your desire, and, and you know we're in an entrepreneurial space, your desire to build a business to bring a greater degree of service requires that you pay attention to different things and pay attention to the same things differently. All right, so this then leads to the first step. So here, here you go, Miguel. First step, design your dream. If we really believed that our thinking has something to do with our results. And I would imagine that if I took a poll that most of you, if not all of you, would say that you believe that your thinking has something to do with your results, then we would dedicate our lives to learning how to unlock this power. I got to tell you all, now, lived in the South for 30 cents, South US. And so we use the word y'all a lot. Um, but so take the girl out of the South, but you can't take the South out of the girl. But imagine if we really got this, how reverently we would treat this and how we would dedicate our lives to learning how to unlock this power. There's no more powerful energy in the entire universe than our capacity to create at will. And if we really got that, then we would come to understand what it is to dedicate our lives to learning how to live from the most powerful, potent, holiest of all questions that we can ask. And I know it's there and I want you to write it down because when you leave here, you will forget it. The question is, what would I love? What would I love? What would I love to do, have, give, be? What would I love? Understanding that it is love itself seeking a richer, freer, fuller expression through you, by means of you, through the answer to that question. 
All right, so as I promised that we were gonna to begin to design a dream. So in this incubator of support and belief, let's begin to dream. Now, go back to your aliveness inventory and notice those places where you felt the pinch, where you felt the longing, where you had the lowest numbers. And let's begin to design a dream, a life that when you think about it, your whole system lights up. Now, here's how we're going to position this. We're going to imagine it's three years from now. Now, I realize I'm in a community of entrepreneurs and we're used to putting together a, a, a systematic plan. And I am not saying that this is a strategic, uh, um, this is not about creating a strategic plan right now. I'm not saying that that's not important, but the reason we go three years out is not because of the strategic plan. It's because there's a part of you that has an opinion about what you think you can achieve in a year. You're not so sure about three years. So we are bypassing that voice that starts speaking up the minute you start thinking something more expansively. So we're going to go three years out. We're going to imagine it's May 5th. 2024, uh, it all worked out. We are back in this exact configuration of amazing folks and you're describing your life. What's the conversation that you're having about your health? What is it that you would love to experience in your health three years from now? I want you to begin to build images. And when I have longer time with you, we really work on writing down statements that as you read them, it activates your imagination and it activates your aliveness. All right, so there's your health. How about your relationships? Three years from now, what's the nature? What's the depth? What's the fabric of your relationships? What would you love to create around your relationships? Write down at least one line that describes something in your relationships. There's my husband and I, he's the one that got to retire seven years early. The depth of our relationship, even after 35 years, just astounds me as I continue to work this formula. His name is Michael and we were scuba diving someplace. I don't remember where we were, I think we were Belize. All right, vocation. When you think about the work that you're doing in the, in the world. Alicia, there's a couple of questions in the chat. Would you okay. like to read them or would you like to, me to read them to you? Or Actually, let me, let me finish this section, Roger, and then I'll jump over to the chat. That Thank you. Plan. Yeah. Um, so when you think about your vocation, this is your work, your gifts, your talents. What would you love in terms of your vocation? How would you love to be doing your work? How would you love to be doing your business? What's the scale, the scope, the rhythm of your work? Who would you love to be working with? What's, what's, what, what is it that you want to do that stretches you in a good way and utilizes all of the gifts that you already have? Write down one or two statements around your vocation. And then finally, oh, let me tell you about Adele real quick. Um, met Adele a couple of years ago. I love what's happened for Adele in terms of her vocation. When Adele and I met, she was struggling. I mean, she had just lost her top client. She was barely out of five figures. And she was really beginning to wonder if she should give up the entrepreneur, entrepreneurial dream and go back and get a job. She was also struggling with her health and her relationships as well. And as a result of applying with my help, what you're hearing from me, Adele, within two and a half years, went from high five figures to crossing the seven-figure mark, that she has created a seven-figure business while just building vibrant health and amazing relationships. And the thing that I deeply appreciate about Adele the most, she's got the girl sign on, is that watching her grow into an even more amazing, confident, grounded um, purpose-filled woman, uh, confidently and courageously bringing her gifts forward. So what is it for you with um, vocation? And then finally, time and money freedom. What is it when you look at your calendar, what would you love to create in your calendar? And what would you love to create in your checkbook? How much money would you love to be generating? And what are you doing with uh, that money? All right, so let me come over to... Um, uh, um, the questions. Okay. 
All right. So Miguel, in your opinion, how much of the, how much of a hindrance is a fixed mindset? And Miguel, I love that question because where are you? There you are. Because here's the thing. Yeah. And I'm going to talk more about that as we go along. So I'll use that question as a, as a, a lens, as I go through this. But the thing about it is, is that working with that question, what would I love? The reason why I say that it is the most powerful, courageous question that you can ask is that it requires you to go past the disbelief. It requires you to go past the fear and really allow yourself to listen deeply to what is coming alive. And so there's a whole process of really being present to be able to listen deeply. So absolutely, you need to expand your capacity to imagine bigger and bolder for yourself. And, and, and there's, a, there's an art and science to that. So does that uh, answer your, it, we're going to go more into that. You're going to understand more about that question as we go through this. All right. So Roger, you said there was a couple of questions. Did I miss something or? Um, a question from Dylan before Miguel. Okay. And I didn't see Dylan. How to deal with thoughts in several directions. I, okay, he, I think he might've uh, sent that to you personally. Yes, he did. Uh, so Dylan, would you like, uh, do you want me to share this personal message with Felicia? He gave you a thumbs up. Okay. Uh, how to deal with thoughts in several directions. I okay. Focus is important on one hand, and on the other hand is our creative mind, and different things coming together has given rise to creative outcomes. What are your thoughts? Okay, so rather than answer that question right now, Dylan, I think that it's going to clarify as I go through this. So would you be willing to put it in the public chat, and then I can keep my eye on it as I go through this? Um, but it's a great question, that it's, it's, that it's the both end, right, of staying in the creative nature while staying focused on a particular thing. But there's, I got a whole section that's going to answer that question for you. All right, so let Dylan, me. Dylan, you have resent it to me privately. Uh, question from Helen. How do you clarify your dream? If you have a variety of interests, will you go into it during your presentation? Yes. Yeah. And here's the thing. You got to remember that we have 60 minutes together, 55. So these are great questions and they're deep questions and there's a whole process to them. So I'm going to, I'm going to skim the surface of it. And then of course, I'm going to invite you to come to something that we're going to go take a much deeper dive into it because these are great questions. Um, all right. So let me uh, pull this up and share. All right, so you're writing, when you write your vision, you're gonna use the phrase, I'm so happy and grateful. What you're doing is that you wanna put yourself into a state of awareness, into a state of believing, of a state of possibility. And gratitude is one of the most powerful ways that, you know, back to you, Dylan, that you can stay focused and that activates that creativity. And I'm going to talk more about that here in a little bit. And you want to talk to it as if it's happening now. Here's the thing. Everything required to build your dream is already here. There's not a single thing that's got to be added. You know, my husband and I moved to Tucson about a month ago. And, you know, we moved from the uh, Los Angeles area, the LA area. Imagine 300 years ago, but we wanted to get from LA to Tucson. We probably would have had to have walked, right? And it's not a very nice walk. It's mostly desert. Every step along the way, we had the capacity to get on an airplane. The reason this is important is because everything required is already here. You just have to start thinking from that state of awareness. We had to start thinking from the state of awareness of the possibility of flight gratitude and, and speaking to it as if it's already here are um, powerful tools to help you access the brilliance and the resources that are here. All right. So I work the law of attraction. I dream, I vision. I bet you've even done uh, vision boards. Why doesn't it always work for me? All right. So let me go back to the questions because I think, um, uh, uh, 
Yes, Helen Louise Hay, absolutely. So um, here's what happens when you've got, you know, your you've got a vision board and oops, I didn't share that, did I? I just saw that. Caught it before you did, Roger. Here's what happens. You know, you've studied this stuff before. You get it conceptually, but yet there's still a disconnect between what you want and what's happening in your world. You know, that I, I love the question that, you know, I've, I've, I, I want to stay focused, yet there's so many things that I want to be um, creative about. Um, or, um, you know, I've, I've, how do I even begin to start dreaming? So here's, here's the thing that stops you. It's this thing called the gap. Now, if you remember, the purpose of your dream is to help you wake up to even more of your amazingness, even more of your brilliance. All right, so look at it this way. Here you are, your current results. Every single one of you has amazing results. They may not be exactly what it is that you want, but every single one of you has amazing results results. Nobody that's participating right now is in dire straits that I'm aware of. And if you are, reach out and, and, and let us help you. Yet you have a dream. Your dream is inviting you to discover more of who you are. Right now, you are a perfect fit for your current results. You're not a fit for your dream results. How do we know? Because they're not in your life yet. It's the gap in between that when you raise your hand for your dream, what you're actually raising your hand for is the process of transformation for you to become the man or the woman that can allow that level of result in your life. When you say yes to your dream, what you're actually doing is stepping into the gap. You're stepping into that state of transformation and you then make welcome a whole new degree of, of abundance and fulfillment and possibility in your life. Okay, so here's what happens in that gap. And I think this is the thing that uh, most people miss and just don't have a clear understanding of what exactly it is that happens. So you have a moment where there's an aha. So maybe it was that moment of, oh my gosh, I really could build this business or you hear something that, you know, uh, um, in the trainings that Roger brings to you, there's, there's, a, there's a statement that lands and there's an aha, like a deep recognition, like, wow, that's great. That then leads to a level of insight that there's a, like, you really start to chew on it and, and there's, a, um, there's like a recognition of it. From there, you begin to cultivate hope that maybe there really is a way for you to create what it is that you want to create. Maybe there really is a way for you to achieve what it is that you want to achieve. Here's the mistake that people make. Most people mistake hope for sufficient fuel to keep you moving across that gap. Hope and wishing does not have the oomph, the, um, the, um, the sufficient fuel, you know, there's a law called the law of sufficiency that you have to have a sufficient amount of fuel to keep you moving across that gap. So what happens is that you get it conceptually, but that you have not cultivated what's required through the rest of uh, moving through that gap. And you have what Bob Proctor calls superior knowledge, but inferior results. Now your results are not inferior. They just don't match what it is that you want. He says it's confusing. I say this place right here is torturous because this is where most people get stuck. They get stuck in hope. You got to move from hope to trust. You now have to be willing to act on the ideas that you're receiving, to act on what you're hearing from me and other people who teach this process of what is it to truly work effectively with your thinking. Now, the Trust is great. You're moving through the gap, but it's still not enough because in trust, you're still having to think about it. You're still having to deeply consider what you're doing and how you're doing it. 
And and um, um, one of you asked about how do we how do you stay focused? I'm going to talk about that here in a second. That the thing that's going to keep you in the gap. Now, as you work with your trust, you begin to build a greater knowing that there's a there's a deeper awareness, there's a deeper recognition, a more of an automaticness of the way that you do things and what you do. And the more you do it, it then becomes a sense of embodiment. It's who you are. Here's the thing about your dream. You don't get to your dream. You become your dream. Let me say that again. You don't get to your dream. You become your dream. You have to embody your dream. Now, in order to step into that gap, there's two questions to answer. Number one, am I ready? And I want you to write the answer down. Here's your answer. No, you're never going to be ready. Here's the thing about whatever your desire is, the desire to build your business, the desire for richer relationships, the desire for more freedom on your calendar and your checkbook. Your dream is a disruptor. It disrupts your current life. It has to. There's a new routine to your dream. It's not just a matter of achieving the goal. It's establishing a new routine for yourself. We're never going to be ready and willing to step into disruption. The, 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 the real question is, am I willing? Am I willing to do what's required to step into that gap and stay in the, the process of the gap until I embody it and my world then reflects it accordingly? All right, so then the question becomes, so how do I navigate the gap? So the way you navigate the gap is by doing what's called build, create a burning desire. We're navigating the gap. So the first step in nav navigating the gap is that you have to create a burning desire. So um, um, the, um, the, the woman, and uh, please forgive me because your name is escaping me right now, who talked about being creative and having lots of ideas. The thing that you wanna do is that you wanna look at what is it that you are seeking to create? What's the experience that you long for and desire? And then I encourage you to make a list of all of the creative ideas that you have and see which one floats to the top, which one has the most juice behind it, which one has the most oomph behind it. Because in order to go through that gap, you have to have a burning desire. Most people think that it's limiting beliefs that are stopping them now. Now, we're going to get to limiting beliefs in a second, but at this point, it's not. When you really start thinking about um, building out something more expansive, you know, the thoughts of, oh my God, I've done this in the past and it didn't work, or who am I going to leave behind, or when am I going to have to give up? All of those things start doing, they start chipping away at your momentum. They start chipping away at your desire, which literally waters down your momentum. It, it, it waters down the steam required for you to take the necessary steps to keep your dream moving. This is when you get frustrated, you get disappointed, and this is when you get stuck. This is what stuck looks like. When you don't have a burning desire for a singular focus, get it going, get that singular focus going, and then you can bring another one in. All right, so think of it this way. Water, now I should have changed this because it's a Canadian crowd for the most part, but think of it this way. Water at the temperature of 99 degrees Celsius or 211 degrees Fahrenheit, what have you got? You got hot water. What happens when water turns to 212 degrees Fahrenheit or to uh, 100 degrees Celsius, that water is now boiling. It's gone through what's called a phase change where it's moved from liquid to steam. The power of this is that you're now able to harness that steam and light up entire cities. That one degree difference when it comes to your dream makes all the difference between kind of sort of going for your dream with one foot on the brake and playing full out and giving it everything you've got. 
So again, you need a burning desire. So the question is, do you have a 100 degrees Celsius or 212 degree uh, Fahrenheit desire? All right, so how do you build a desire? Understand where that desire comes from. That desire is not your desire. That is life force energy seeking a richer, freer, fuller expression through you and by means of you. Your dream is actually life's dream dreaming through you. And the more you get that, the more you will work with the question, what would I love? Now, when you have lots of ideas, the power of this is that you start noticing when you put conditions around those ideas and it helps you drill down to that singular answer, the singular answer of what is it that brings me most alive? What would I love? And again, it goes back to Miguel, what you were talking about. It takes such courage to ask that question. It is such a vulnerable question because effectively you are stepping into a realm that you've never known for yourself before. And you have to partner with a life force energy, something so much bigger than just you in order to listen deeply and act on that question. All right, now, so remember, we're moving through the gap, right? This is how we're navigating the gap. And so first you designed your dream. You want a really clear picture of what brings you most alive. Understand where that desire comes from. It's not your desire. It's life force energy. And then to work with the question, what would I love? And begin to physically write it down. Now you want to build a bigger believing. But here's the thing that you're building a bigger believing in. You're not necessarily building a bigger believing in you. You're building a bigger believing in three things. Number one, the power of your thinking. This life force energy acting through your, the power of your imagination. Number two, you're building a bigger believing in these laws, that these laws truly are, that they're at work, just like the law of gravity is at work. And then number three, you're building a bigger believing in your dream, that your dream begins to take on a life of its own. Now, the thing that gets in the way that keeps you from really believing in the power of your dream and the power of your thinking in this life force energy is a thing called condition-based thinking. We as a species have been trained to trust the information that our five senses gives us. That when you start thinking about doing something more expansive, you start collecting data to tell you whether or not this is possible. If you're really serious about this and you really understand the power that we wield and our capacity to use our imagination, you have to build a bigger believing in your vision over than what's happening in your world because your dream is going to ask you to do something bigger than what your world is giving you permission to. The other thing to keep in mind is we're, again, we're building a bigger believing is that you have a set point, you have a limit to how much good you will allow yourself to experience. So Miguel, back to your question. How do you listen to what is it that you really want? You know, how do you, how do you decide on what is it that you really want? You wanna be mindful of the part of you that will stop you from dreaming because it's beyond what you have allowed for yourself up to this point. It's beyond how you see yourself. It's beyond what you, um, um, your permission, your ability to receive good. You have a habit for how much good, how much abundance you allow yourself to experience. And so a key part of this work is increasing your capacity to allow more good in your life. Think of it this way. Condition-based thinking and having a set point is like if you want to change things in your world, it's like going to the thermometer and lighting a match underneath the thermometer, hoping to uh, warm up the room. Just because the thermometer is moved up doesn't mean that the um, um, things have changed um, consistently. Just because things on the outside may have changed temporarily, you have not cracked the code on how to maintain um, um, consistent change and you have not changed. The change needs to happen internally. It's at the thermostat. And you have an internal thermostat that as you build your believing and your capacity to create through your thinking with this life force energy and increase your capacity to allow more good in your life, now your world has permission 
to change, to transform. So how do you build a bigger believing? Work with your vision, as I've shared with you, and you do a process that I call zip yourself into the skin of the person who achieved your dream. You build a, a relationship with your dream and with the person who achieved this dream. Now, the way that you do this is by cultivating the way that person would feel now. You've got two superpowers. One of them is that you have an imagination that you can create images. You can consciously choose images. The other one is that you have the ability to generate your feeling state. You have the ability to cause yourself to feel grateful, to cause yourself to feel fulfilled and joyous. And so you ask yourself, if it all worked out or as it all works out, how do I feel? You feel amazing now. Cause yourself to generate those feelings now. Then ask yourself, who am I as the person who achieved these results? Who am I as I'm watching this training? Who am I as I make uh, a phone call? Excuse me, or dinner afterwards? Who am I, when I as I brush my teeth? You're going to be somebody. You're going to be the person who created your current result, or you're going to identify with the person who created your dream result. Now, the reason this is so important, and, and um, this goes back to the question of, you know, how do I know what actions to take? How do I know what direction to go into? What you're doing in this state and what you're doing with this process is that you're doing what's called generating state. You're generating a state of being. You are literally changing your brain chemistry. You're lighting up entirely different areas of your brain and you are connecting to a source that knows all things. You think differently, you entertain and you act on big, bold ideas and you gain greater clarity. This is where the clarity comes in. That when you are thinking from the state of awareness of your dream, you have a much greater capacity to hear and have clarity around what are the actions for you to be taking. You're no longer throwing spaghetti on the wall and just hoping, seeing what sticks but that you are truly tapping into a stream of intelligence that's showing you. And you're magnetizing everything you need to succeed. You're doing what's called activate your brilliance. This is step three, activate your brilliance. Now, there's two questions I wanna share with you to help this process along. Number one, ask yourself, what can I do where I am with what I have? It's crazy how much resource we have, we're just not able to um, um, see it thinking from same old, same old. But as you're generating a state of being, now you can see the resource and supply that's always there and that you have the ability to see how to now take it and apply it. Second question, to unlock your brilliance. If I believed this dream was possible, what is the action I would take right now? If I believed my dream was possible, what is the action I would take right now? Write down every single idea that comes to you and notice the ones that have the most juice to them. Now, you're rinse and repeating, you're rinse and repeating because remember what you're doing is going through that gap. You're moving from insight all the way up to embodiment and all along the way, there's the voice of the status quo that's gonna wanna move you back to what current, what was, and and um, what the habit was, and the and and the um, the discipline, the rigor is to stay in the dream, stay in the state of being, and to keep your feet moving from that state of it's already done, as you're generating gratitude um, and celebrating along the way. All right, so let me share Becky's story, and then I'll share how we can keep this going. Right. Met Becky. You've got a pile of questions in the chat waiting for you. Okay. All right. And we should uh, be finishing in uh, seven minutes. Okay. How do I, uh, speaking, I know exactly the people I would like to collaborate with and those very established individuals. And super so Serena, I would suggest that you ask yourself, how can I serve those people in now? You know, the part of you that wants to keep yourself separated you know, what do you have to bring to them now? 
um, and, and, and stand in that, you know, again, zip yourself into the skin of the woman who's already doing it. How to deal, uh, I read focus is important. Okay. So Dylan, I hope, um, um, that I answered that question around, um, letting the answer to the question, what would I love guide your focus in your direction? Um, uh, so, um, uh, Rick Gupta, I hope I pronounced that correctly. I do a whole thing on building a bridge that absolutely you can build a bridge, but be the person who's doing your dream now in your current job, bring, bring that identity as the person who succeeded in your business to your current job and see your current job as a stepping stone. Uh, uh, clarity leads to burning desire. If you, uh, I have lots of ideas. How and see, write them all down and notice the thing that rises to the top. Um, because there will be one thing that really brings you the most alive. Get that going, get it going, and then see what next thing you can bring in. Here's the other thing I'm going to encourage you to do look to see how they're all related. My sense is, is that you have, um, um, so many people that I work with have lots of creative ideas and they think that they're all different, but in reality, there's a thread that winds through all of them. Find the thread and serve the thread because that thread will then grow and it won't matter as much of what the format is. And there will be one particular format that will rise to the top as you're serving the, um, the cord that run the golden cord that runs through all of it. And then as you get one going, then you can get another one going. Um, uh, um, then yeah, Helen, then you definitely don't wanna go towards something that you don't have a uh, burning desire around. Um, at the beginning, Mitch and Bob, Bob believes that we should surround ourselves with the right people. And how crucial. Oh, <laughs> Miguel, it, it is. That for me, as I shared um, in the beginning, was um, that was the needle mover. You know, it's one thing to study this stuff on your own. But when you allow yourself the gift of having someone who's walked the path before you, that cares deeply for you and has a system to unlock your power, it just, it's, it's, it catapults you. It's like rocket fuel on your dream. So um, yes, love the question. So, all right. So um, Roger, uh, where am I in terms of time? You have uh, about four minutes. All right. So uh, real quick, Becky, uh, met Becky a couple of years ago, again, struggling. She was working 60, 70, 80 hours a week. Sundays, she'd wake up with a knot in her stomach, wondering that was the day she had to do her books, not knowing if she was going to have enough money to meet her bills. I am so grateful she stepped in. I got to help her with the system. She is now working five, 10 hours a week. She has more than doubled her income. She's now on her way to tripling her income and doing things that she absolutely loves and loves her work again. She is not selling her brick and mortar. She loves it. And every area of her life is improved. All right. So how do we keep this going? So like I said, this is a nanosecond of time. It's we're barely scratching the surface. So here's what I would love. And I know it may be a bit of a leap because it's next weekend, but I'm going to encourage you that if this spoke to you and your dream matters, I would love for you to join me virtually next weekend, May 14th, 15th, and 16th for my three-day virtual event, Your Ultimate Life Now. Well, we're going to dig deep into everything that you heard. We're really going to dig into your dream. Look at the things that are keeping you stuck. You know, wrapping my arms and the arms of this amazing community around you to, to discover tools to keep you moving forward. Really spend time getting clear, that especially for those of you that um, are uncertain, that we really dig deep and, and um, create an incubator for clarity in order for you to begin to build a momentum. All right, so there's the link, yourultimatelifenow.com. Again, I know it's short notice and you may have plans next weekend, but here's the great thing about being an adult is that you get to change your plans. And I promise you change your plans and give me the opportunity to help you for three days. We're gonna go deep and really help you get moving. So 
uh, the, um, the investment typically is $197 US. I'm here. I'm, you know, um, honored to be part of Rogers community. And so as um, a member of Rogers community, um, I'm offering it to you for $97. And there's the code when you register capital F capital F 2021, that that will give you a $97 um, uh, uh, friends and family um, uh, rate. And again, so so the money, it's not the money, probably for the most part for you all, it's the time. And so ask yourself, is my dream worth it? Do I matter? Does my dream matter? And would I love to get this kind of help for three days and really moving things along? And in addition, I have a Facebook group, so you can join in the conversation right away, Ultimate Life Now. If for joining the Facebook group, I, um, I have a gift where I basically summarize everything that I just shared with you. So I know you have notes and you can get a summary of what I just shared with you. And I go in and do trainings periodically throughout. And we just, we've got some really juicy conversations going to support you with your dreams. So those two ways, come hang out with me for three days and join my Facebook group. All right. So Alfred Adler, famed psychologist, once said that he gave thanks for the idea that sought to use him. I give thanks for the dream that seeks to use you because here's what I know. When you say yes to what brings you most alive, not only are you blessed, not only does your life get enriched, but truly this is how you enrich the lives of everyone. This is our highest contribution to the body of humanity. I hope to see you next weekend. I really look forward to seeing you in the Facebook group. Thank you so much for allowing me to serve you today. God bless. Felicia, thank you very, very much. A little point of clarification. Is the money in American or Canadian dollars? Uh, U.S. dollars. U.S. dollars. Okay, that's just super. Uh, on behalf of, uh, of EIN and uh, our 21 meetups, aggregating to 77,000 people. So 77,000 people are saying thank you, Felicia, <laughs> for uh, sharing your uh a novel, fresh, exciting approach to uh, becoming unstoppable, to really going after our dreams and our goals. It's really super refreshing. Thank you, thank you, and more thank yous. Yeah, thank you, Roger. <laughs>